Hello and welcome back to another PriceCP Roblox Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about rope constraint in Roblox. Here in my workspace, you can see I have a couple of different parts up here. All the parts at the top, they are all anchor. And all the parts at the bottom, they are not anchor. To add a rope constraint, I'm going to click on the Model menu tab. I'm going to go to the Constraint section here. I'm going to click on the drop down and select rope. We're going to place our first attachment here and we're going to bring it down to the bottom and we're going to place another attachment there. So now I have two attachments and uh, in the middle here I have the rope constraint. And now with the rope constraint selected we're going to go to the properties window and look at some properties. A lot of the properties are exactly the same as your rod constraint that we have learned in our prior tutorial. So for more details on those properties, you can refer to our rod constraint tutorial for more details. For example, the color is the same exactly like the um, rod constraint, the thickness, the visible property. Um, everything so far is exactly the same as the rod constraint property and able. It's the same attachment zero, attachment one. Current distance is the distance between the two attachments. So that's exactly the same as the rod constraint. The length. The length can be different. Right now it is, is exactly the same as the rod constraint, but you can move this part. For example, if I select part two and I'm gonna move it. So I'm gonna move it a little bit to this side and then up. And you can see that if I click on the uh, rope constraint now, you can see that the uh, the distance, let me look for the distance. Okay, so the current distance is now 10.75, but you can see that the length is different. It's, the length is more than 14. As opposed to the rod constraint, like uh, the distance and the length, uh, they, they're always going to be the same because the rod is... is going to push your parts out if the, the length of the rod is, is longer than the distance. But with the rope, you're allowed to have some slack here in the rope. So that's why the distance and the length can be different. Another one of the differences between the rope constraint and the rod constraint is the restitution. The restitution gives the rope some elasticity. So with restitution zero, there's going to be no bounds in the rope. But if you make it, uh, you change it to a one, let's say, then now your rope is gonna be like a bungee cord. It's gonna be um, very elastic. It's gonna be like a rubber band. How about we play and take a look? You can see it's already bouncing around a lot, right? I, I didn't even touch it yet because uh, we had it up here and it dropped down. And since the rope has restitution of one, it, it's like a rubber band, it's like a bungee cord. The next thing that we're going to do now is we have a couple of parts here. We're going to build two swings. So I'm going to start with this one right here. So this one, I just have a rod and a block at the bottom. I'm going to click on the rope constraint. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to click on, at the top and I'm going to bring it down to the bottom. I'm going to place the first attachment at the bottom and then I'm going to click again on the rope constraint and I'm going to select the same attachment at the top. I'm going to go to the bottom. I'm going to create another attachment at the bottom. So now if you look at my part C here, part C is the, the top part here. It has only one attachment, but it has two different rope constraints. As opposed to part D is the part at the bottom here. It has two attachments. So there are two attachments at the bottom. We only use one attachment at the top. We're gonna to do the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna click on the rope constraint. I'm gonna create one attachment at the top. I'm gonna to bring it to the bottom. I'm gonna click at the bottom, click on the rope again, click at the top and bring it down to the bottom. So now again, um, the top has two attachments. This is one and this is two. And it has four different rope constraints, one, two, three, four. And the bottom has four different attachments. You can see one, two, three, four. Now for our second swing here, we're, we're going to put four attachments at the top and four at the bottom. So first I'm going to click at the, first I'm going to click on the rope constraint. And I'm going to put the first attachment at the top 
bring it to the bottom click on the row constraint again put one at the top bring it to the bottom and we're going to do the same thing on the other side so click on the row constraint i'm going to attach that side and last one attach this side all right so now we have two different swing one with the only two attachments at the top and this one has four attachments at the top they both have four attachments at the bottom let's play and take a look so now i'm gonna go and hop on one of those and get it moving and i'm gonna hop on the other one to get this one moving wow this one's moving more than the other one let me try the other one first i missed it next we're gonna learn how to add a winch motor to our rope constraint so let's go to this part right here that's part a and i'm gonna click on the rope constraint i'm just gonna click on one rope constraint here so i'm just selecting this one right here right i just want to show you the property for the winch motor so if you go to the properties window you go all the way to the bottom you're gonna see a property called winch enable if you check that box you're gonna see a couple more properties here you got the winch force winch responsiveness winch speed and winch target so now in this tutorial we're gonna play around with two of these properties we're gonna play around with the winch speed which gonna tell the system how fast to 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 retract the rope and the winch target when it reaches this target it's gonna stop so now let's go to our service script service and we're gonna look at the script on how to do that here in my service script service i have a script called rope script let me enable it and let's take a look at the script inside the script we're just going to wait for 12 seconds be before we do anything and we're declaring part a part a is this part right here it's the top part basically i'm getting all the children of part a so i'm getting all these attachments and rope constraints here these are all the children of part a we put them into this array called constraints and we're using the for in i pairs loop to iterate through that array for each child for each element of that array we're going to check to see if it is a rope constraint so remember that this, there are a couple attachments here we want to skip those right so we only want to pick up these four rope constraints inside of part a for each of those rope constraints we're going to change the winch enable property of the rope constraint, right? Which we, we saw earlier, the winch enable property. We, we, we want to change it to true. So basically, we're checking this box, right? And then we're changing the winch speed here from 2, which is the, uh, the default. We're changing it to 0.7, and we're changing the winch target from 5 to 6. Let me now um, disable this uh, winch enable. So now when we press play, you're going to see that this swing here is going to remain the same. But this swing, the length of the, the, the rope is going to shrink. It's going to get smaller and smaller because the winch motor is going to retract the rope. So it's going to make it smaller and smaller. All right, let's take a look. Let me go to the swings. I'm gonna hop on the first one. Maybe I'll hop on the second one. You can see this one is starting to move up already. So uh, the, the length of the rope is getting shorter and shorter. And eventually, look at that, I almost, I almost hit the top already. And now I'm hitting the top. Look at that, I'm stuck up here now. I got better jump off. Let me give this one a push before I jump on it all right there it is and before we end today's lesson i just want to show you one thing you can see that i'm standing on the, the swing right now and look at that it, the the bottom platform is not taking me with it all right so um the the reason for that is because the platform the bottom platform here i made it too thin so there is a minimum thickness for the bottom platform and if you make it uh, too thin the physics of the rope constraint is not going to work and the platform is not going to take you with it
And by the way, I, I was experiencing this problem earlier today and I had no idea what was going on. And very lucky for me, um, uh, somebody was able to help me and show me um, what the problem is. So um, I just want to pass it on to you so that in case you're working with rope constraint and you, you have this problem, or if you see somebody else with the same problem, you can help them and show them how to fix it. So now let's go to studio and we're just going to make this platform here. We're going to select the platform and we're going to scale it. We're going to make it thicker and that should fix the problem. So whenever you see that problem that the platform is not taking the uh, character with it, just make the platform thicker. Well, in the case of the rope constraint, not, not in other cases, but in the case of rope constraint, just make the platform thicker. And when you play the game again, it should work now. Let's take a look. We're gonna push it. And I'm gonna try and hop on. Wow, that's going really fast. I gotta time this right up. Oh, I stopped it. Anyway, so now you can see that it's moving and I'm on top of it and everything is working fine now. Everyone, that's how we use rope constraint in Roblox. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.